Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palicka, international new artist and educator here. And today we are going to paint a beautiful flowers. You can have a wee preview of it in here. So one stroke is my favorite technique and I hope you will love it as well. Let's start this tutorial. This is summertime, so lots of one stroke coming up. Uh, you guys know this is my favorite technique and I will show you how to do kind of like a, a different type of petals and some ombre with some black outline. But also quite often you ask me, how do I clean my brush? And you can see this brush is full of paint and it's really hard. I wouldn't be able to paint with it. So for my uh, one stroke brushes, so that's my two one stroke brushes, like a level one and a level two, I like to use the acrylic monomer. The monomer is designed to, uh, to be used with the brush and uh, it dissolves the acrylic paints. Uh, so it is a fantastic way to clean it. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just going with my brush, dip it in and the brush goes like, just press it on the bottom and this way the brush soaks in the monomer and the acrylic paints comes off, okay? And the brush is really nice and soft without of the damage, you can see the shape of it. And then once I have cleaned it in the monomer, I will grab the water and a couple times I would clean it in the water, like I want to really get rid of the monomer, just so my paints aren't affected, okay? So this way one brush is ready, now I'm going to clean the second brush just exactly the same. Don't press it too hard on the beginning because the brush might be hard with your acrylic paints. Let it soak in. Of course, different brushes, I clean a different way and uh, I might actually do a video for you guys on the, only on the brush care, like uh, what I use for different type of brushes. Okay, and then this brush is clean as well. So I can put my monomer away and I'm glad this is actually the first video we're recording in a studio. The studio is not finished yet, guys. I even didn't bought my desk yet. I'm just saving the pennies for a, a new desk. Uh, so I'm using kind of old one. Um, we made it kind of nice and pretty. I have put the crystal handles in the door, drawers and, and it looks pretty okay, but um, it's not the one I was wanting. Anyway, let's do this nail art. And another thing you have guys asked me is uh, the yellow nails. So what I will do is I will, I will do some yellow decorations as well. Uh, we are going to start with the ombre. And for ombre, you guys know I love using the sponges. So I'm just cutting a small piece of the sponge. And I love it because from one sponge I get so many different uh, applications back of the form. And this piece, you can keep it for mixing your gels and other stuff, so I don't bend this part. Uh, and then here I can clean the sponge. I don't want any dirt and fluffiness. The color which we are going to use is 198 of my cake. Uh, it's a really beautiful yellow and it's so highly pigmented like uh, that's this actual color I'm, I'm able to use uh, for an ombre, even if it's a gel polish, okay? So I'm just uh, painting a small bit in there, small bit in there, clean my sponge so there is no dirt, and then the sp sponge is going to absorb the gel polish, uh, but I'm able to paint a nice and beautiful ombre. I'm only uh, interested on blending the color first, the white part with the yellow. I don't want to be too pigmented yet, uh, with the clean part, part of the sponge, I'm blending it even more. So it looks pretty okay at this stage, um, but we want the free edge to be more pigmented. Okay, give it a cure. And same on this one. So the stuff I've got on the sponge, I can use it to blend it the top part. There is hardly anything on it, but I like to use it when there is hardly anything on it. Blend it, blend it. So first of all, we really concentrate on the blending, not on the pigmentation, okay? Don't worry if, if the color is very, uh, very light. Um, this stage is not about that. Okay, this stage is just so we've got a nice transition in between the white and the yellow. Remove the fluff 
and then give it a cure. And then the second layer, we are going to make it more pigmented. So before I touch it, I've got some product absorbed already on the sponge and I'm just going to use this first. Now I'm not uh, doing a brushing motion as much, but more of the dabbing motion. You have seen me also doing a gel polish with a clear acrylic uh, ombre with the gel polish and a clear, clear acrylic as well. So if you find that that's the gel polish doesn't blend in really well, what you could do is you could use the acrylic uh, clear acrylic to sprinkle on top of it and that will give you a nice texture uh, for the gel polish to stick in and help you with the blending. Um, as I say, I'm not the fan of doing the ombre with the gel polishes, but actually this particle color is really nice. Uh, it was actually full collection, so it was the 198, the 100, 201, so it must be 199, I think this was this one here. Uh, yeah, so this full collection is really, that's like a almost primary colors collection. There is also a greeny one as well, and they're really good for blending those uh, four colors. Okay, cook them in. Put that on the side. And now we are going to start doing the design. You've got two options. One option, if you're really fussy, uh, you could apply the normal top coat and just give it a couple scratches and buff it, or you could apply the matte top coat. I find it like um, if there was um, any extra layers on the tips, sometimes it might, might be not 100% even, so I like to give it those couple scratches with the buffer to make sure the surface is really nice and perfect. But anyway, I'm applying the matte top coat. Actually, it's so pretty in yellow. Um, we should do maybe some more summary, like a fruit design with the uh, lemons or something. I can imagine like, you know, a full set or even a pink daisies, like very quick and easy design, guys, like a pink daisies. I uh, can show you that as well. Uh, very simple uh, to do it. And now we are going to squeeze out the colors. So I'm going to use the acrylic paints in all sorts of different colors. And a black paint concentrator to paint the thinnest, thinnest lines ever. Even I have used the matte top coat, I still give it a clean, um, just so there is, um, like they've got, this top coat is a kind of velour top coat, so you can feel it, those, um, it's actually really nice in touch. You can feel this velour kind of texture. Uh, that's why I give it a little clean. clean. And now we are going to squeeze out the acrylic paint. So for this color combination, I can still use the pinks and purples. I think it will look really nice. So I've got a wee drop of this color, wee drop of pink, wee drop of magenta. You guys know magenta is my favorite one, just because it's quite um, highly pigmented. Uh, so it just makes the life easier for a one stroke and it's quite dark color so I can mix it with much lighter colors and then the white there we are okay and my water and the brush and now we can start painting so if I depend my brush in the water I'm drying out the water you don't want to have too much water uh, on your brush, okay? Higher point of my brush pick up the light color and then the lower part of my brush pick up the darker color. And now is the time for blending. Now I don't like to have two strongly two separate colors like uh, I quite like when they really mix together. Uh, I find it like this way I get a really uh, really nice coverage. And now we are going to start painting those um, designs. So it will be a slightly different flower. Um, I think I can go with the line like along those side. Touch, touch, touch. Go to the top. Give it a little wiggle. And that's the first petal painted. Okay, pick up more paint. Second petal painted and just opposite side I'm painting exactly the same shape of the petal. Okay, 
in, so that's our base. Now I want to um, add a different color, so this time we are going to work with a bit of um, purple as well. So mix that well, load your brush with the product. And a drop of the light pink. So now I'm going to close my flower one side, going to the top and the flower is closed. Okay, then the tiny one on the side. And the reason why I don't want two separate colors for this design is uh, I want to outline it a little bit with the white, so if your top part is too white, the outline is not going to be uh, as much visible. Okay, very tiny petal, and then I'm going to close it, and exactly the same on this side. Drop more of the paint. Let's close this one. You can see it, we've got like a kind of, uh, I would say bell shape, like a petal. And then this one, we're going to the top and we've got another closed flowers. Okay, I'm just cleaning my brush, put it on the side and now we, are go we can paint with uh, the Detail, detail at work. So I'm just cleaning my D-liner brush. Ideally, if you've got two separate uh, brushes for a gel and for acrylic paints, that's best. Uh, I kind of like mix them quite often and use them uh, different ways. So I'm just cleaning my brush and then get it into the shape by rolling the paint over the brush. Okay, and we are going to outline it with the white. To be able to outline it, you need to uh, have a really watery product. Okay, and then first outline. So we've got those kind of bell-shaped flowers. The top part. One stroke are also amazing, like if you stuck with the ideas or if you don't know what to do on your client's nails, they are perfect. Um, for for the new art like the one stroke and the clients always love it they always impressed when they see some one stroke okay so we have outlined those petals And now we can bring some uh, tiny crystals and also some, some detail in black. So I'm using the uh, black paint concentrator and it's like a water, so you have to be very careful like when you're opening up. Um, I would say it's almost like an ink. It's so highly pigmented, so I'm always putting a small drop of it in there and then the black acrylic paints. You can use it on its own. I quite like to use it actually, um, oh, this one is almost gone. I quite like to use it uh, with the paint uh, for a better results. Okay, 
So I'm picking up a little bit of the paint and the black paint concentrator, roll my brush into a nice shape. And then once I have picked up the right amount of the product, I'm going to fill up the inside. Of this bell shape flower and here just a wee tiny one Okay, pick up the black again. Paint some black line. And another one. I love painting uh, those black lines with uh, this product because you can go really nice and thin. Uh, then dotting tool. And we are going to add a couple of the dots. So some in white inside the flower, like very tiny ones. And then some black dots. Uh, I will have uh, some crystals here as well. Not a lot, just a tiny. Amount and I can add some dots in here. So it's a kind of a little bit of the abstract new art as well. And then some caviar beads and the crystals. So I'm going to use, I've got some pears in here and for sticking the crystals on, I love to use the base gel. So a drop of the base gel and this way they never come off. I, okay, never say never, but they are more likely to stay in really well. And I want those crystals in here. And couple in there. And then why not some here? <laughs> Get it spoiled with the crystals. Okay, gem picker. And I don't want them to be too big, so I'm just picking up the tiny wee pearls. And then the caviar beads. 
I love those tiny ones, like they, they look amazing. So what you can do is you can play, you can take them out from the pot. Uh, so you've got uh, more control over it, what you pick up. Uh, and I'm placing two close to the crystal. Don't have too much base on your brush. So one, two, then one, and one. So it's like a mini caviar beads composition. And same in here, one, one, one. And I'm using the Micro Styler brush. This one is quite old. I wouldn't be able to paint a nice line with it anymore. Uh, so I find it is perfect for me for picking up those uh, caviar beads. So delicate and so cute, like a micro nail art. And obviously the client's nails are quite small, so you don't want to go too, too big sometimes. And I think this is just so delicate. Okay, now I'm just going to add a bit more. So a drop of the base. And we will give like single one, single one. And that's enough. Don't overdo it. So one. You could place them inside the flowers as well. I think it will look super cute. Uh, but that's my composition uh, finish. I'm just going to give it a cure. And then we can apply the top coat. And then apply the top coat. So I'm not applying the top coat over the pearl, but you can apply the top coat over the caviar beads. I usually do it. And cook it. On the next one we will do slightly different flower. And again, I will use a different color just so you don't see me all the time using only the magenta one. Um, uh, so I can get rid of this uh, palette. I'm going to quickly paint the black first. But this time we will paint the flower on top of the line. This is quite quite nice even on its own with the yellow, like black and yellow looks super cool together. Okay, so let it dry a little bit. Actually, I'll just quickly clean it, get some room for another color. There we are. And we will use some blue. So I'm squeezing out a bit of blue. And the yellow. Clean my brush.
dry it out and now we'll paint another flower so I will paint more those kind of type of flower okay so I'm picking up a white with the drop of yellow and a blue mix it well almost so we get a kind of greeny color in the middle And now I'm just going to paint those flower, but we will use this space here. And um, I didn't buff the surface. I feel like when the surface is buffed instead of um, matte top coat, you get a much nicer results as well when it comes to the one stroke. The top coat has its uh, has it has its texture, and this is definitely affect affecting the way how how you paint the one stroke. If I go with this uh, over the petal now, I will have the acrylic paint texture, which is much more rougher, and uh, the blending is going to be much nicer in the shape of the petals. So. If you've got a chance of buffing, I would suggest buff over the matte top coat, definitely. Okay, so I'm just painting those petals. Mixing well again, so I've got those kind of greeny color. Very tiny petal. Wait for it to dry and then we will do um, one more petal row inside of this flower. We can also paint some leaves, so I'm going to mix it even more into my greeny color and then add a drop of the white at the Tip. So I will have like a almost a pastel-y green color in my brush. Touch, touch, go to the side, bring it down and that's the leaf painted. Another one. Okay, and we have painted like a three tiny leaves. I do it again. So pick up the paint, and the brush has the angle, so you can almost just press it harder and then press it lighter, and that will give you a nice shape of the leaf as well. And on the place where we're going over the line, we need to just make it a bit more pigmented. Then clean my brush and paint the row of the flowers inside. So mix my colors. And now in a gap side, I'm painting the first petal. Okay, so I've got three petals there. Pick up the paint and go over them again. Just wait for it to dry a little bit first.
Okay, so one stroke doesn't have to be like two separate colors, extremely separate like. Uh, I prefer it when they are more kind of blended. So I just need to wait a couple seconds for it to dry, but to save the time I can stick in the crystals. I actually like this combination of the colors. And it's not pink. <laughs> okay, that's plenty. Caviar beads. And then another one here. Single one. Single one and a single one. Give it flash cure. And then we are just going to touch up the top. So I'm picking up the lighter color, the blue. And on the bottom, and now we are going to add some crystal in there. The caviar bits would look pretty too. So just in the middle, what else we could do is we could just paint a black in there and just keep it at, um, black with the couple of the dots. But for a change, I'm going to stick it a wee pearl in here, just inside. Caviar beads, white oak line, and then this design is finished as well. Flash cure, so I've got time to get my brush ready to pick up the white paint. I'm just squeezing out the drop. Clean my brush with the white paint because we was painting with the black before. And now outline it. And if I would use, uh, when we was mixing the colors, if uh, my petals would be two separate colors with this uh, white on top, you wouldn't be able to visit, uh, to see the outline. So that's why I like to mix the colors a bit more than two separate colors. I 
I think it looks more realistic as well, like when we've got those slightly more blended colors rather than just like on two separate ones, which are great for easier designs, I would say, like on basic one stroke. Here we have created almost like a half a leaf. There we are. So highlight this place. And that's another pretty design finished. So I'm going to apply the top coat, give it a cure and then show you what we have created today. So we have to wait a couple seconds for the white paint to dry. And now we are going to top coat it. But painting the lines um, with the black paint concentrator is so much easier than any other product like guys. Okay. Then once you're happy, give it a cure. This one is ready and I can put it in here. So we've got yellow. Actually, I should put them like this. No, like this. Pink, blue. And then this one is almost ready. No, I should put them like this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, like this, no, like this. I don't know which way I will place them, just so they go together. And the next one. I love the middle one, I think. It's a really nice combination of the blues and greens, like it looks really, really pretty. So that's what we have created, guys, today. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial, sending you glittery hacks, and bye for now. Oh.